Greetings and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig with Let's Learn This Together. Custom collision masks are a great way to set up collision in your game to have it be exactly the way you want. Now, if you're wondering what a collision mask is, then you're in the wrong video. Check out my Basics of Collision video to learn about all of that. And in it, I actually talk about custom collision masks and we create one. But in this video, I wanted to break that down a little more and to show you some real life examples in my project Fluffy Heroes here, which I have written a book to create a platformer. You should check that out if you're interested. But I wanna show you some examples of custom collision masks in here. And I wanna talk about why I used them to give you an idea of when you might want to and how you might best go about that. And just a quick note before we jump into the video, this month by using the code THEBIG30, you can get 30% off of all of my courses over on my website at letslearnthistogether.com. I'm turning 30, so I figured I'd celebrate by giving all of you a discount. Again, that's the big 30 for 30% off. So first I'll show you the game that I have here. It's an action platformer and you can build it inside of the book that I've written, but this is essentially it. You've got a couple of abilities. You can jump around, you can grab this rock and roll it, and you can collect power-ups to grow stronger. So all of that being said, let's take a look at the custom collision masks that I'm actually using in the game. The first one is gonna be the player itself. So if we open up this sprite, I can open collision mask, and you can see here that my collision mask looks like this. So I have a lot of different sprites for the player, including different skins that the player can be, and every single one of those is gonna share this exact same collision mask. And that's because when you're moving around and doing collisions, you don't want that to be changing because it'll cause you issues like getting stuck in walls or hitting things when you don't think you should actually be colliding with them. So setting this up as my custom collision mask just made a lot of sense. The way I did that was actually by choosing right here. I didn't do it in code, I did it through the GUI by clicking on this and choosing it. If you choose same as sprite, then the collision mask changes every single time you change sprites. So when you change a sprite to someone else or anything else, it then changes. But if you set it here to be one, it is always that one collision mask, which I think is really, really nice. So then I have this rock and you saw this rock and I moved it and you might be thinking, well, it's a circle, so you should use a circle collision mask. That makes total sense but that's not what I did at all. Instead, it's actually a square. So if I wanted to do a sphere or an ellipse, I could, I could do this, but I found that when I change it to an ellipse, it doesn't necessarily slow down my game, don't worry about that. But instead it actually causes some issues where when it's rolling, it gets stuck in the ground and I have to push it a little more while it's kind of standing still and then it continues to move once it gets past like a certain spot or like a certain angle in it. And that was not what I wanted at all. So instead what I did, I kept it as a square and then I rotated the image angle. So the rock itself, the collision mask never changes from a square. Instead, the actual sprite gets changed based on the angle inside of it. This is a cool little trick that you can use for really anything, but a lot of times you don't want the collision mask of something to change, you just want the sprite. So if you draw the sprite differently based on the angle, then you can do that. So that's pretty cool. And that's a nice little tip that I would suggest using for oddly shaped things. Give it a rectangle and then just get it to fit in there as best you can. Maybe use a couple different ones. So the last one I want to show you is the enemy. So this is the attack, or this is his idol. But in these, I use a small rectangle here. And then if I open up the enemy's attack, I use another collision mask. So I actually change the collision mask on these each time I do it. So on the attack one, it is a precise per frame. The reason for that is if you just let it be an automatic rectangle, it's gonna fill up this entire space, 32 by 32. And you can see that really at no time is he completely occupying that entire space. So having a collision mask when I can take damage from this enemy, that would not be a good way of doing it. Because the collision mask is set by finding the furthest left, which is this right here, the furthest top, which is right here, the furthest right, which is over here, 
and then the furthest bottom, which is his feet. And it makes it so that the entire space in between that is the collision mask. So instead, setting it precise per frame fixes it so that the collision mask is only exactly where the enemy is. And that, I think, makes a lot of sense. And again, don't worry about it saying it's going to be slow. Unless you've got hundreds of objects that are all using precise, you're not going to notice a slowdown. I have never encountered my game slowing down or losing frames because I'm using precise per frame or ellipse or diamond or whatever. So when you need to use that, go ahead and do it. Get your collision mask exactly the way you want it, and then you'll be all set and it'll work a lot better. On the explosion one here, I have done this, I've given it just automatic, but I actually don't even use this collision mask anymore. And that's because once you've changed an enemy to being exploding, I no longer want to actually be able to collide with it because, well, I don't want to take damage from a dead enemy. So I'm using a custom collision mask in the sense that I'm not even using this collision mask at all. But those are some examples of when and how you might want to use custom collision masks in your game. I hope that helps. If you have any questions, let me know. If you're interested in picking up the book for this to learn to code and make games with no experience at all, or maybe you want to make a platformer and you want to see exactly how I do that, you can check that out in the link below. It'll be launching in just a few weeks, maybe a month or so. So check that out. I'm super excited. And thanks for joining me. As always, keep making, keep learning, and I'll talk to you later. A huge thank you to all of the awesome people who support me over on Patreon. Their names are on the screen now, and every dollar pledged helps me create more awesome content. You can support me for as little as $1 a month and get access to exclusive perks like my Discord server, your name in the credits, early access to my YouTube videos and courses, and more. Check it out at patreon.com slash letslearnthistogether.com or find the link in the description below and become a patron today.